Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of 20 Minutes with Farpoint. This webinar is titled OSDP Installation Workflow. My name is Stephen Shep Shepard, and I am the Key Account Sales Manager at Farpoint Data. This webinar is a sequel of sorts to our introduction to OSDP webinar. During that intro, we provided some fundamental definitions and information on the new SIA standard, the features and benefits, and why you should be learning more about it. Well, it's obvious from the registrations that we received that OSDP is a hot topic, and there's a strong desire to learn more about it. In fact, this webinar is based on several of the questions that we received regarding the field implementation of OSDP for both new installs and a week into OSDP conversion. Now, before we get started, one thing I wanna make clear, we are not gonna take you through a soup to nuts installation of an electronic access control system. More so, we're going to focus on the deployment of OSDP, and that is between the readers and the controllers as uh, laid out in an access control system. So let's get started. For this webinar, we will provide OSD, an OSDP overview and review, installation service checklist, we'll discuss site and system evaluations, we'll discuss OSDP reader and controller configurations, and finally, working in the trenches with OSDP, and of course, we will allot some time for a question and answer. By the way, just some housekeeping, uh, this is a recorded version, so we cannot hear you and, and we cannot uh, answer any questions during this. However, if you do have any questions, please do utilize the slide at the end of this presentation and submit all your questions to either myself or you can, or you can put them directly uh, to the Farpoint Data team. Open Supervised Device Protocol, or OSDP, is the new C approved standard protocol for communications between electronic access control readers and controllers within a physical access control system. Most physical access control systems over the past several years have been utilizing another CS standard, the Wigan Communication Protocol. And while Wigan is a simple and reliable connection, there are some noteworthy reasons for the implementation of OSDP for your new installations, and also for upgrades and retrofits of your existing systems. For example, some of the advantages of OSDP over Wigan are, OSDP provides bi-directional communication between the reader and the controller. You know, the ability to communicate to a reader rather than just receive data provides many benefits to include supervision or tamper or even easier firmware updates. OSDP provides the option of encrypted encryption or what we call secure channel between the reader and the controller, and this is definitely a plus. OSDP, based on its utilization of the RS-485 electrical communication standard, can facilitate increased options for system topology to include controller layout, wiring distance, and the, requ and the required conductors needed for a system. And OSDP can facilitate advances in reader technology or increased reader intelligence going down the road. Think about it, readers right now only communicate one way, but the ability to communicate to a reader now can open up all sorts of possibilities in the future. So there are several technological advantages in supporting the OSDP protocol. However, perhaps the best motivation is that OSDP is the new CIA standard. Further to that, CIA just announced uh, its launching of OSDP Verified recently. This is a program uh, that provides comprehensive testing to both validate the conformance with the new standard and it will provide insurance assurances to dealers and integrators, consultants and end users that the equipment that you're using meets all the applicable requirements of the new standard. And this just in, the International Electrotechnical Commission or the IEC has also recognized OSDP as an international standard for access control communications. So there's a little shout out to my friends on the other side of the pond. Installation service checklist. The first two questions in any OSDP deployment within a physical access control system are, is this a new system installation or is this an existing system that I'm going to retrofit? First, let's consider a new installation with no existing system. By the way, for the record, Farpoint does not advocate, endorse, or recommend any manufacturer's physical access control system, although we do prefer those that support and deploy Farpoint data readers. For any new system, it is important to discuss and understand that your end users, what, what your end users want and what they expect. This includes system function, cap system function, capabilities, and a fiscal expectation. In other words, how much is this going to cost me? Typical questions, what doors do they want covered? Where are these doors located? Where can you strategically install your controllers in conjunction with door location? And what are the distances between the controllers and the readers? This is all important and very relatable to the benefits provided by OSDP. For an existing installation, the questions are similar, but with some caveats. Is this a complete system update, moving from one system to another, or are you just retrofitting the existing system with an OSDP deployment? If, if so, what of the existing technology and products can you reuse? What about controller real estate, or where you locate your controllers? You know, in today's IT-centered world, electrical closets are quickly becoming convoluted with multiple devices. 
Perhaps your end user is looking to reduce this footprint. OSDP can provide a solution to minimize this hardware footprint. Can you utilize the existing cable or wiring? This is a common question and a very relevant one, and one that we will discuss, um, and we will discuss this later uh, in under, uh, under the slide working in the trenches. Also, how many existing doors are on the system? Do they want to expand this? And where will those new doors likely be located? These are all important questions on your checklist. Site and system evaluations. When deciding if OSDP is right for an end user, you need to consider some of the benefits as previously described. It's not that Wigan does not work. In fact, it does. However, OSDP just provides more options for your end users and subsequently more options for your sales team to, to provide or to present. It's always a great idea to have a solid conversation with your end user regarding their vision and expectations for how the system will operate today and even in the future. For example, some questions for your end user may include system capacity. You know, is this, is it like what you see is what you get or is there a likelihood or a possibility of future expansion of the system, either at that location or even remotely? IP compliance. You know, OSDP encryption option certainly is going to be of, of, of interest to the IT manager in, in any organization. And again, an important thing to consider. Reader and device supervision and tamper. If you have an end user who has got a future vision, this is also something that may be very, very important to them. Once you establish your customer's expectations regarding scope, security, and system operation, then you can better provide your team with a site and system evaluation that also takes into consideration the desires of your end user. Product capabilities. You need to ensure that your physical access control system and the relevant components of the system are OSDP compliant or now OSDP verified. And this includes the system, the controllers or controllers and OSDP converters, uh, readers, and the wiring and the cabling. First, we're going to talk about the system. When choosing your physical access control system, just make sure to check out their OSDP deployment capabilities. While OSDP is a communication protocol between hardware, readers and controllers specifically, you also need to make sure that your system software can support OSDP. Then there's your controllers. You'll need to determine that the controllers you plan to deploy support OSDP. Now it's important to understand that not all system manufacturers manufacture their own hardware or their own controllers. It's also important to understand that not all controller manufacturers support OSDP natively or may only support OSDP in specific topologies. Example, some controller manufacturers do support OSDP and can utilize RS-485 as their physical connection between controllers and readers. However, these same manufacturers may only support OSDP in a point-to-point -to -point topology and do not support the multi-drop option. Also, some controller manufacturers do not natively support OSDP. However, by utilizing a third-party converter, OSDP can be deployed between the readers and the controllers in compliance with the CS standard. Readers. As OSDP is the new CS standard, it continues to gain traction, and we are seeing more and more listings and bid specs, and as such, there is more support for OSDP emerging from all serious reader manufacturers. Today, all Farpoint data readers comply, or most Farpoint data readers do comply with the latest OSDP version 2.1.7, and we continue to support the, the standard and will continue to, to, to work towards it. Regarding the actual reader, there would be a need for specific changes in the firmware to natively take advantage of OSDP. In other words, a direct connect to an OSDP verified controller. However, once again, a converter could be used at the reader to convert from Wigan to OSDP. Connectivity and cable. One of the key advantages to deploying OSDP is that it requires only four conductors. This compared to Wigan, which can require five or more. Most installs require a large bundle of multiple conductors to be pulled to a door, so any reduction in cabling is appreciated. This saves on cost too. OSDP can be supported using CAT5 or CAT6 cables. System topology options. OSDP supports two distinct wiring topologies, point-to-point, -point, which is more traditional, or multi-drop via the RS-485 communication protocol, and we'll discuss this more in the trenches. When laying out your system, having these two options can be beneficial. For example, if you're retrofitting an existing system, there's a strong chance that you will be dealing with point-to-point -point topology, where all the devices are wired directly from a door to a terminal strip or connector or connector on a controller. OSDP can be deployed in this manner, and you can likely utilize the existing wire, but we do quote, uh, we do we do note that you should inspect it first. However, the OSDP protocol also supports multi-drop topology. Using multi-drop via the RS-485 layer can provide some advantages. Less conductors, as we already discussed, which saves time and money, which can save uh, uh, total cost. Longer wire runs, for example, a remote door, you can again take RS-485 up to 4,000 feet on the proper cable. 
and less need for control in real estate. And, and that is something, again, that we discussed earlier. If you decide to utilize RS-45 in a multi-drop topology, the readers you utilize must facilitate the ability to be assigned an address from an OSDP controller. Reader and controller configurations. Once you've agreed on an overall detail of the system with your end users and you're ready to move forward, you need to determine the OSDP capabilities of the system that you are installing and how you plan to configure the communication between the controller and the readers utilizing OSDP. Now, configuration starts at the system or the software, and some of the more common OSDP settings are enable OSDP tracing, and this provides additional diagnostic information from the device wired to the controller if the software will support it. OSDP secure channel, and this is probably the most common thing that you'll see. Again, it encrypts the communication channel between the OSDP reader and the door controller. This is huge and something that I'm sure that many of you will find that uh, if you are working with an end user who has um, very, very strict IT compliance, this is going to be something that is going to be very interesting to them. This is also something and information that you should arm your sales team with as they will likely be going out and utilizing this in their, in their uh, work to uh, upgrade uh, customers and also in their new offerings. Baud rate, default rate is 9,600 baud, and this is recommended, but again, the baud rate or the communication between, uh, be between uh, multiple readers on an RS-45 drop can be regulated. Um, and then finally, OSDP address, as we said, if you are utilizing multi-drop topology, and that's more than one device per port, a unique address must be assigned to each device. This address is assigned by the controller and facilitated by the reader. And finally, we're at working in the trenches. You know, if you've been working as a field tech in the electronic access control industry over the past 20 plus years, you have worked with the CS, with the CS standard, and that's the Wigan communication protocol. And for the record, as mentioned, Wigan works. Uh, in this presenter's opinion, I don't see Wigan going away fully, especially not in the small to mid-sized system market, and or for systems that are based more on convenient entry than high security. However, as with a lot of technologies, Wigan has reached the limit of its ability to evolve any further than what it is today. Functional, functional is great, and Wigan is certainly that, but as technology evolves, new threats emerge, and that's what OSDP is really all about. In comparison, I think it's safe to say that OSDP provides better security and more options, and moving forward, OSDP will facilitate new and advanced features at the door. I have seen such readers in my international travels. Think of a reader that can display a custom message to a user when they present a valid credential to a reader upon entering a building. It could remind them of a meeting or an alert for the requirement of using PPE on that day. First, we're going to address, first, we're going to address in best practices, uh, and we'll start with the use of existing wiring. So we're gonna talk about best practices. Um, you know, this question comes up a lot, and that's the wiring question, you know, can I use the existing cable? Uh, this is usually right after is, can I reuse the existing credentials of the system? but we'll cover that in another webinar. Case scenario, a system upgrade, upgrading from Wigan base to OSDP verified controllers and readers. The common question is, can we reuse the wire? Here's the deal. There's a great chance that you will have more than enough conductors as OSDP via RS-45 only needs four. However, before making any call on existing wire, make sure you inspect and test the existing wire. Also, since we're on the topic of wire, please know that shielding is always recommended when using RFID readers. Remember that that R stands for radio, and you should think of it as like tuning into your favorite radio station uh, with the cleanest signal and no static. This is what you're looking to achieve. Shielded cable and a solid earth ground can make that happen, uh, and I could tell you countless stories of how this can affect performance. So again, if you're going to use existing wire, please make sure you inspect it, but also make sure you got a good earth ground and make sure that you're using shielded cable. Multi-drop topology. Now, many of you know that when you send a tech out to check out an existing system, not one of your installs, you never know what you're going to find. And equally, many end users have different expectations and needs. And that's why having an option like multi-drop, as facilitated by OSDP and RS-45, can be very, very helpful. Most of the electronic access control systems installed today, other than those utilizing PoE controllers, and maybe even some of those, operate via point-to-point -point topology. That's a one-reader, one-port deployment. We used to refer to this as home run as in everything home runs or wires back from a door to a port on the controller. So here's some great news. OSDP fits naturally into a point-to-point -point wiring layout. There's no problem here. However, we've also discussed how OSDP writing on RS-45 serial transmission can facilitate multi-drop. This basically means that multiple devices can be powered and communicate on a single four-wire RS-45 loop originating from a single port 
on an electronic access control controller. So what about the risks or vulnerabilities? What are the inherent issues when deploying OSDP on a multi-drop loop? How many devices? Based on RS-485 capabilities, you can have up to 16 devices on one loop. The question is, should you, and even more crucial, will the system you're deploying support OSDP in this topology or this type of configuration? One of the risks of deploying multiple devices on an RS-485 loop is signal latency. The best way to describe latency would be to think about a point-to-point -point install where you're directly connecting a single reader and a door to a dedicated port, one port, on a system controller. The only traffic on these lines is based on the activity at that one door. Now add to that single door the signal traffic coming from 15 more readers installed at 15 different doors. Now you have a lot of signal traffic on the loop and this can create latency. Some people might call this collision. This would be manifested by slower reads at the door. Addressing. Further, if you utilize the option of multi-drop deployment, the readers must be assigned addresses so that they can be identified within the loop. This address or addressing is assigned via the OSDP, to, the OSDP tools, as discussed earlier, from the controller. In addition to device addressing and other features that OSDP facilitates via OSDP tools, it's important to understand that not all electronic access control controller manufacturers, based on their technical ethos or experience, will provide the same capabilities. For example, I've heard of some controller manufacturers limiting their multi-drop spec to eight devices, and I've heard of others who will only support the OSDP protocol in a point-to-point -to -point topology. Service and vulnerabilities. One reason you may consider the use of multi-drop is to extend a port on a system to facilitate a grouping of several doors located a great distance apart. However, it should be mentioned that if you experience a line break within a loop of devices, any device that is wired past the break would cease to operate or communicate. This would mean the difference between one door being down versus several doors being down and could have an impact on the type of call you get from your customer. But then again, you have to ask yourself, how often do you experience these types of line breaks within a system? We're finally at the question and answer period, but again, as a recorded version, you know, if you do have questions, please do utilize the information here. You can see uh, the general supported Farpoint data email. Uh, you can go there, or you can contact me directly at stephen.shepherd at farpointdata.com. Um, you know, uh, again, during the parlance of our times, we certainly want to make sure that everybody out there is okay and that everybody's doing well. We certainly miss seeing you all face to face. But again, in lieu of that, uh, we do have these uh, webinars and uh, we certainly do appreciate your time and attention uh, in viewing them. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to view them live, and you know, we will certainly send out an abundance of electronic information uh, announcing when they'll be, uh, you can always go to Farpoint Data's uh, uh, website at www.farpointdata.com and or you could also visit our YouTube channel. Um, if you look up Farpoint Data on the YouTube channel, you will actually see recorded versions of our webinars and also some audio video, uh, some audio visual tech notes that we've developed uh, for various um, elements uh, of the Farpoint data line, whether it be Prox, whether it be Contactless Smart Card, whether it be the Long Range Ranger, or our new uh, mobile platform, the Connect the, the Connect Reader platform. So, listen. With that, I wish you all health. I wish you all uh, safety and uh, stay strong out there. And thank you very much for again your time and attendance on this Farpoint data webinar. Bye bye now.